All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, before we get started, uh, we're gonna go through some quick rounds of intros. My name is Farah and I am going to be our moderator today. I am the Director of PR and Community Relations for Madwire and Marketing 360 and I am very glad to be here. Our panelists today, I'm sorry, before I go there, let me talk about what we're gonna cover today. So today with our awesome panelists, we're going to be covering tips and tricks to bring in more qualified leads, the best ways to keep your leads engaged throughout the sales cycle, how to use technology to help nurture your leads, how you can move leads from your, the top of your funnel to paid customers, signs your customer is engaged and ready to buy, and how never to miss an opportunity to close a customer, knowing the right content to share with your leads, analyzing lead, lead behavior and content performance to increase sales, and how to build trust and credibility with your prospects. Our panelists today are Brandon Lilly, Nick, and Alicia, and I am going to ask each one of them quickly to unmute and introduce themselves before we get started. Brandon, we'll start with you. Oh, thanks for the heads up on that. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, my name is Brandon Lilly. I'm the Senior Brand Director for Marketing 360, uh, which I like to say is a made-up title for a made-up position. Uh, it means that I get to do a lot of fun things like this, uh, really focus heavily on uh, you know, digital marketing strategy, working with our ancillary brands and our partners, uh, getting to know them and sharing cool stories. Uh, I've been in marketing for over 13 years. I own my own uh, small business myself. It's a year round Halloween store here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And uh, I'm just really excited to have these conversations and to uh, talk with and learn from Nick and Alicia. Thanks, Brandon. Nick. All right, so um, my name's Nick. I've been managing the web development companies that build in our software, as well as CRMs that build in our software for the past eight years. Um, I've worked with IDX Broker for the past 10 years, and also have helped build real estate agent websites. Um, I mainly help developer partners, you know, train them on how to use the platform, train them on marketing, um, train them on, you know, help them with custom development as far as writing CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Um, and then I also do web development and marketing on the side. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Alicia. My name is Alicia. I'm excited to be here today. I'm the national speaker for Bomb, Bomb which is also kind of a made up title, Brandon, right? I'm all for it. <laughs> Um, I have spent the last several years um, all over the U.S. and Canada training agents on marketing, communication, social media, um, obviously video. We are a video company, so that's the primary thrust of it. But um, my favorite part of my job is actually watching agents see success in their business. So I'm excited for this conversation today. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. I am going to stop sharing my screen so that everybody can see everybody much larger. Um, but to get started, I just want to remind everybody to please put your questions as they come up in the Q&A. Um, I will be monitoring that as long as Todd, who's in the background. Um, so please, if you have questions that are coming up as we're talking, please put them in the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them live as they come in. Um, so we'll get started here. First and foremost, um, in, in real estate, sometimes people can be very quick to fill out a form or to show interest in something when maybe they're not actually ready to pull the trigger on buying a home or selling a home. So when we talk about qualified leads in the real estate market, how does a real estate agent go about ensuring that the leads that they're capturing are actually qualified and they're people who are ready to either start the home buying process or ready to start the home listing process? Well, one thing to note is most people that do generate leads, it takes a while for someone to actually, you know, find a home that they want to buy. Most people are going to be a lead for a couple months before you actually convert them to an actual buyer or seller. Um, so it is important to really communicate with them throughout the process to really keep them engaged. Yeah, I think that so often agents, you know, they, they'll get a lead in and they'll send one or two pieces of communication and they don't hear anything and they're like, okay, obviously they're not ready. And then they just move on. Um, where the truth is, is we know that anytime when you're talking about sales and marketing, it takes multiple interactions often before they even trust you enough to like have a conversation. So 
I think it's important that regardless of whether you get the feedback right away of if this person is actually ready to transact, that you're still going out of your way to try and maintain that connection or at least establish that connection with them. But to answer your question directly, the best way you're going to know if they're ready to transact is if you can actually have the conversation, yep. know which bucket to put them in. Listen, at the end of the day, if I haven't unsubscribed, I'm still interested. Yep. Right. If I'm over the communication, I'll unsubscribe from that. I'll, I'll tell you to knock it off. I'll tell you to go away. You know, if I haven't said that, I'm still interested. I may be filing the information away somewhere. I'm a huge researcher. I spend a ton of time doing that. My wife hates it because I can't ever make a decision without a bunch of research and, and data to back it up. But there's a lot of people that are, that, are, that are like that, right? And so they're just collecting this information. They're trying to learn from you. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're never going to work with you as an organization or as a, as a realtor unless you hit them at the right time and you've built the history up to that point. So what does that look like when we're when we're talking about continuing to stay in communication? Um, you know, real estate agents are extremely busy. So what are some tips that you guys have for staying in contact with these prospects who maybe aren't ready to pull the trigger yet, but they're not yet unsubscribing because they know they're going to be there? So what types of communication do you recommend to keep in touch with prospects? I mean, I'm I'm gonna recommend video right out of the. I was gonna say I know Alicia's got some ideas. Here. <laughs> like yeah. chomping at the bit. So, 92% of consumers start their home buying or their home their listing process online. 78% of those consumers are going to work with the very first agent that they connect with. They used to say meet face to face. Now they say the first agent that they connect with. So, if I as a consumer start poking around on websites and filling out some forms and looking at things on Zillow, I know that I'm going to start getting hit up by a lot of realtors. The realtor that sends the video, the agent that sends the video and is able to connect with that person as a real human being, they're going to be able to maintain that connection way better than every other agent that is sending the exact same plain text message. It's you know, it's, it's why we're such a big believer in video. It's why agents see such great success with it, because you have the opportunity to make the human connection. So I, I recommend when I'm teaching every single lead that comes in should get a video from you, even if it's a Mickey Mouse lead, because those leads can still get like a, Hey, what's up, Mickey? I didn't know you were shopping for homes in Colorado. Like you can kind you can create a different kind of connection, even with a, someone who didn't want to give you their real name that you can't do in a plain text email. So before, uh, real quick, Alicia, before I let these two chime in here, um, for those on listening today who might not be familiar with BombBomb, can you just explain briefly how the sending of a video through BombBomb works? Yeah. So we make it really easy for you to communicate over video, whether that's email, text, Facebook Messenger, LinkedIn Messenger. Um, video files themselves are huge, right? If I record a video on my phone of the kids and I want to send it to grandma, you get really limited because that file is huge. And so what we do is we make it easy, whether it's from your computer, whether it's from your phone, whether you're in Gmail, whether you're in like a connected CRM to just press a record button say what you want to say as a human being. And when you hit send, it goes off to them just like any email, but rather than it being plain text or even a link or something they have to download, we embed that video right in the body of the email. So when they open up the email, they say, see a big human smiling face, they see a play button. All they have to do is press play. And now you're speaking to them directly. Great. Awesome. Did you guys have anything to add to how to keep in touch with prospects. Absolutely. Uh, I think we can definitely add to that. Uh, obviously there's email, which is kind of a no brainer, you know, email, especially if the, if the prospect is giving you their information, that's a very clear winner. And that ties right along in with bomb bomb, right? You know, you can use uh, email as the platform to, to source that video or to support that video. Uh, additional to that is obviously your phone contacts, right? You've got to give them, you've got to get them on the phone. I don't want to talk to you on the phone, but sometimes that's a good way to get a hold of me. It's also generational, right? So you want to kind of understand where your customer is at, which is why you have to use different channels to try to reach people. You've got to try video. You've got to try email. You've got to try phone. 
Uh, if they've opted in, you try SMS, you know, text message. I've got my phone right here. I'm sure I'm getting text messages. I've got my Apple Watch right here. You're going to get the text messages there, right? We're all connected. But what, in addition to that, like outside of trying to reach your, uh, your prospect, your lead, you also are going to need to make sure that you're keeping track of how you're communicating and what you're communicating. So it's incredibly important that you're using a CRM or a customer relationship manager in addition to this. Uh, just rapid firing or keeping track of things on your yellow legal pad, that doesn't cut it because the more connected you are, the more available you are, and the more interact or interactivity you have with your lead and your customer, the more likely they're actually going to sign that contract with you and they're going to buy the house or sell the house because your, your lunch is going to get ate by every other realtor out there that is also calling them. It's that technology that gives you the edge. So you've got to use every single piece that's at, that's at your disposal because the gap is widening between technology adept realtors and ones that are still doing it kind of the old way that they just used to. Nick, did you have anything to add? Yeah, so well, they pinpointed a lot of the main things um, that you really need to use. You know, video messaging helps make it a lot more personable. Um, you can also use, you know, making sure you use a CRM for tracking all of that kind of stuff is really beneficial. Um, normally, realtors earning over 100K a year are two times more likely to use a CRM than those earning less. Um, so, you know, that's a big thing to end your marketing strategy. Um, also, you know, social media like Facebook, um, LinkedIn, um, you know, text messaging, phone calls, um, all of those things will really help you engage with those leads to really work on them and create them into buyers or sellers. Great. Can I, can I jump off of something he was going to say there? <laughs> no, I think, I think what's so important is, is, you know, once you make that initial contact is being able to identify you know, uh, how you're going to be able to provide value for them. Like what's their buyer persona or, you know, who, who are they, what makes them tick? Because that initial contact is just, that's like the smallest piece of that process before they may even be ready to transact. So you want to make sure that you're doing a good job. If you can make that initial contact to get a really good understanding of who they are, so that even if they're not ready to transact, you're able to provide value that is still going to separate you from the pack and make sure that when they are ready to transact, you're the person that's top of mind. Yep. And the buyer personas are really important. That way you can give them content that's applicable to them, whether it's the area that they're looking at, whether it's, you know, if they're a buyer or seller, um, you know, there's so much different content that you can give to different parties. Absolutely. So pivoting off of that point, um, we're all busy. I would, I would also argue that most realtors are probably extremely busy, especially with the current market in most of the country. Um, and so what are some ways in which a real estate agent can do all of these things and employ all of these really good tactics to keep in touch with people without having to make it so personal that they're reaching out individually to each specific person rather than maybe sending um, you know, a, a, a nurture track email to all of their prospects that fit a certain specific demographic, maybe. So what you're talking about there is marketing automation, right? It's, it's trying to do more with less, uh, work smarter, not harder, all of these different uh, sayings that we've got. So the marketing automation is taking that next level, that next step. You're already uh, utilizing the technology. So you've got email, you've got SMS, you've got your social accounts and profiles, you're, you're utilizing BombBomb, bomb. you've got a, a technology uh, enabled website. So you're using IDX broker and things like that. So you've got all these pieces, but now you have to tie them in together so that you are not the person that is manually doing things. I'm traveling right now. So there is a lot that I can't do on my own business or that I can't do you know, for Marketing 360 because I'm traveling and there's a, an aspect of my job that I just cannot automate. However, this doesn't always need to be the story that is had, that doesn't have to be your narrative, right? You can automate different aspects of your marketing. So your communications, your messages, your methods will always happen, whether you take a day off, you go on vacation, you take the kids somewhere, you know, you've got something that crops up and you just can't get to it. You can trust that your marketing is actually working and that you're not, again, losing leads and letting another realtor eat your lunch just because you weren't there 
uh, you weren't awake, you weren't operating it quite as fast as this other person. So what you're talking about is marketing automation and it's absolutely critical in a technology enabled world so that you can actually take a breather and, uh, and a little self-health, you know, self-care, self-health uh, and, and operate your business on things that can't be automated. Okay, but how do you make marketing automation seem more personal? Uh, I think Alicia's got some great ideas here. I can see, I can see the excitement. Here it comes. So I, um, so Tiffany Bova, she's like the chief evangelist at Salesforce, and you know, little company called Salesforce. And I saw her speak at a Tom Ferry event one time, and the quote that she said that has stayed with me is, she said, "Automate the things you can." but human contact can never be automated. And so I think that's where, you know, having, having the different buyer personas, knowing, you know, what people in a certain demographic are, are looking for, what, you know, is this someone that is trying to sell their house and downsize because they're retiring? Or is this someone that's buying a house because they're about to start a family? the more that you can have a good understanding of who these people are coming into your pipeline, it's going to give you the ability to automate some of that content that feels hyper-personal as well as dripping in some of that more human stuff, right? Like a content piece, letting a first time home buyer know that they are, you know, that, you know, they're a first time home buyer. These are some of the things that you should be contemplating even a piece around like things to ask a real estate agent, right? You providing that kind of value and having those kinds of pieces intermixed with a more personal video, or even if it's not a personal video, even it's a generic, if it's a generic video, but you're still providing value, you're, you're triggering that familiarity effect. Um, which basically says the more they're exposed to you as a human being and as someone who's providing value, the easier it's going to be for them to just trust you. So I would say, you know, you need to have different content buckets so that when you find out that someone is, you know, a first time home buyer or downsizing, that you can drop them into that bucket so that the things they're getting feel more personal as opposed to them just getting just listed. <laughs> every week for the next three months. And I, I'm not super familiar with marketing 360. I don't know how, if you're able to bucket them like that, I think that's definitely a, a Brandon question. Yeah. A lot of it will depend on the technology that you're utilizing. Um, and also thanks for setting that up so that I can plug marketing 360 uh, <laughs> because marketing 360 is definitely the answer to that question, right? Yeah. It has the email platform. It has the CRM. It has the SMS uh, functionality. It has the ability for you to uh, automate your social posting and all things like this. Uh, so you are able to ingest all of your customer information and then utilize Marketing 360 as the platform to automate these marketing pieces, including personalization. You know, if someone has filled out a lead form on your site because they're looking for a house, we can take that information, parse that into the customer relationship manager, and then utilize that as a part of a full, uh, you know, fully encompassing, full-fledged marketing platform to pass that along through your different marketing channels. So name, phone, email, now we can personalize your emails. Name, phone, email, now we can personalize your text messages. This is a, a big part of how that, that human element can remain in what still needs to be automated, especially as you're growing at scale. It's one thing to do this when you're just starting out, you got, you know, you get one or two, maybe three, three leads a week. As you grow and as you scale, now you're going to have a lot more to do. And hopefully you're closing houses and you're listing houses on the other end. So you can't always be communicating, which is why automation is critical. Um, so just throw the plug in there, marketing360.com. You can set up a free account, utilize a lot of these tools for free forever. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> That's Alicia. my pitch. Alicia, can you repeat the quote that you stated at the beginning of that, which was automate the things you can, but human contact can never be automated. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. Nick, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah. So, well, the real estate industry in general is an industry where the more you work, the more time you put in, the more money you're going to make. Um, and a lot of that, you know, um, goes hand in hand, but that's where a company like Madwire, you know, Marketing 360 comes into play is if you don't have the time to do it, you can hire a company like that 
to really help you automate a lot of your marketing, set up your marketing. And in turn, with the amount of leads that you're getting and the leads that you convert, it's really a drop in the bucket based on the commission that you're actually getting from the sale. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really worth it in the long run. Um, and the other thing to note is, you know, individualized emails, text messages, phone calls really convert usually six times more than non-individualized emails. Um, so it is really important to really make that email applicable to the client. Um, you know, use their first name, last name when you're sending that email. Um, and that will always help as well. Great. Awesome. Um, so we talked a lot about using technology to nurture leads, which is obviously great. And especially in this world we live in, it's really important. Um, but let's, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about how we can move leads who are maybe just watching the things you're sending, they're engaging with you. How do we move those people from just kind of watching to actually pulling the trigger and saying, let's go shop for houses? Or I like let's sell the them. house. <laughs> I like to ask them, ask them the question, you know, send them that email. Uh, or if you're, if you're in voice communication with them, send them the text, give them a call and be like, Hey, where are we at? Where are we at on this? You know, if you're three yeah. months, six months, nine months out, like we don't have to dance around this question. It's not something that we actually have to be afraid of. So send them an email, right. And automate it. And, you know, this email and say, Hey, where are we at? You know, are you three months out, six months out, nine months out, just looking, uh, you know, did you get eaten by a shark and I was unaware? If so, tell me so I can send you flowers, like something like this. And whatever link that they click on, whatever button they click on will move them into a different email track. So now they're in a different audience and you know that everybody in this audience, they're at least 12 months out. So you change your content to reflect that. You change your content to how you can uh, forecast what the market is going to do and, and what you, uh, you as the realtor, the expert are seeing or predicting in the next 12 months in this kind of market. So you're able to kind of tailor your content to them. You'll find pretty quickly that most people, if they're still listening, they're still reviewing your content, they're happy to let you know where they're at because it just helps them get better information. There are going to be a, some people that are like, oh, thanks for reminding me. I wanted to unsubscribe anyway. Good. You don't want to waste your time on them. You don't want to talk to them anyway. You've got actual customers to deal with. Let those guys go. You know, they'll come back if they feel like it. Otherwise, you're just cleaning, you know, you're cleaning the list. And that is a good thing. You guys have anything to add there? Yeah, I think that um, I think tracking on your content and, and being able to pinpoint like what people clicked on which types of emails they're opening and not this is really, really crucial to understanding where people are in the process. Um, I, one of the most important things that I could tell you with your marketing is that it needs to be a conversation, not a monologue, right? If all of the content that you're sending doesn't provide an opportunity for them to click something that might interest them or ask a question, or you know, if you're not building in some places in your marketing, to get a good vibe of it and you're just throwing information at them well you're not having a conversation you're really monologuing so i think it's important that in your marketing pieces that you um, have clicks or calls to action that are also going to give you insight to know where they might be and where their interest might be because then you can follow that up with the personal conversation right I, i've been teaching about tracking for so many years now and, and I still get this response from agents like, yeah, but if I call them right after they watched my video, won't they think that's weird? No, I could talk about something right now without opening my phone. And when I log on to Facebook later, it's gonna be advertised to me. <laughs> so the fact that they know that you have the technology to see that they opened an email is not really that creepy. So if you know that they interacted with a message and you know that they clicked on something to go look at something else or to dive deeper into that, then pick up the phone and call them. Hey, I just wanted to check. Did you get that information you needed? You know, so it's giving you the opportunity when your marketing has those types of triggers built into it. It's giving you the opportunity to see, oh, oh, this person took a step. Because I sent that email to 150 unconverted leads, but two of these people clicked on that and, and you know, went to this site. Okay, well, there's your insight that those people 
can have are probably thinking about you, you should make the personal phone call. Absolutely. Nick, yep. you got that um, anything? Yeah, so I'll just add, you know, response time is key really in the real estate industry. Um, so that really makes or breaks a lot of sales. Um, and the other thing is, you know, with IDX Broker in particular, with Google Analytics, you can really track which people are more engaged with your website um, or with email marketing. You can see, you know, who opened it, who read it, how much time they spent on that email reading it. Um, and all of those things really equip really give you insight into how serious that lead is going to be. The more that they're browsing the website, saving properties, you know, looking at properties, looking at your emails, normally they're going to be a more serious buyer or seller. And then you just want to get with them right away to kind of make sure that all of their needs are met. Uh, as I'll some, add, I'll add, oh, go sorry, go for no, it. No, no, go ahead, Brandon. I was going to say, I'll add on to that. Uh, Nick, you mentioned talking about the uh, amount of time the, uh, the, the, the delay of getting in touch with a, with a contact. I used to be a lead generation manager for a real estate company. It was one of my first jobs moving to, after I moved to Colorado. And I found that every minute that passed between them submitting a lead form and me getting in touch with them, my opportunity to convert them and, and hand them over to, uh, to a realtor where they started talking about buying or selling a house dropped dramatically. Yep. Once it took more than seven minutes for me to get in contact with somebody, the likelihood of me getting in contact dropped by 90%. Mm. They've so moved on. They've moved on. They're doing <laughs> other things now. And it's the same with me, right? I'm a, I'm a busy guy. I got a lot going on. I got two kids. Uh, you know, so when I reach out, that's when I have time, not later, not, you know, I have time now. It might only be 30 seconds, 60 seconds, but that way you get to hear my voice. I get to hear yours. There's some sort of communication happening and we can schedule a time for later. That's okay. You know, that's an okay conversation to have, but, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll talk to him in two, three days. I've already moved on. I've already bought a house by now. <laughs> in this market. Yes, you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Nick, I'm not super familiar with IDX Broker. Here's my mm -hmm. question. Uh, yeah. So if I have an IDX Broker website with a lead form on it mm -hmm. and someone fills out a lead, can it kick them out an automated email? So, um, well, yes, you can set it up like that for sure. Um, so, you know, you can, whenever a new lead signs up with IDX broker, you always get an email and SMS notification. If you have it set up like that, that a new lead has registered. Um, and then we can send an email directly to that lead as well. You can send it via IDX or via the CRM. Um, yeah. so you do have options as far as that's concerned. Cause it's, a, it's such a great place to drop a video. I yep. over and over and over and over again, if you have an automated lead response going out, whether it's over SMS or if it's over email, I would highly recommend having a pre-recorded video in there because even if, even if you, um, you know, you make the phone call, obviously you always make the phone call, but if you make the phone call and you don't get to talk to them, they're still getting that video, which is differentiating you from the pack because it's giving you an opportunity to introduce yourself and they get that, that human sense of who you are, which separates you out from every other realtor's automated email that they're getting from filling out the lead form. So yeah. I highly recommend if you have an automated lead response going out, you got to put a video in there and it's really easy. I, I mean, you can put a video in anywhere if it supports email or sms i can show you how to drop a video in there <laughs> yeah. and with idx broker that initial email is customizable so you can change around all of the terminology and even with a crm you can set it up to send you know your own email if you really wanted to as well awesome um so we touched just i feel like a little briefly in what we just discussed on how we know when a customer is engaged versus maybe not so much. Can we talk about that a little bit more? Well, yeah, sure. those things, are they, are they clicking? Yep. <laughs> are they engaging? Are they opening your emails? Are they watching your videos? Are they coming back to your website to check out more listings? And that's <laughs> the importance of having the technology to actually be able to see these things. Yes. <laughs> You've got to have that information. You can't, again, you can't just operate off of the yellow legal pad. I don't care how organized you are. You are not as organized as a computer. You're just not. I don't care how organized, how long you've been doing it that way. You're just not as fast as an automated system. 
you can do, you know, you can, you can add the human element, which is absolutely critical to success. You can't just automate everything and never have human interaction. It won't work. All right. You'll feel like you're, you're doing an incredible job, but you'll never have any customers. So that's, that's not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for is being able to take the human element and pass that to the 300 leads that you got last week, right? Get that over there. And you've got one of the ways to do that is to ensure that the people that you're spending your time on, that you're really focusing in on heavily with the human aspect are people that are truly engaged and interested in working with you. So by using the technology, are they clicking? Are they visiting? Are they engaging? How often are they on the site? How long are they on the site? What are they looking at? What drives them? That's how you can really make sure that you're focusing your time on the customers that matter right now versus the customers that will matter six weeks from now. Well, and I think that's an important thing to remember is that, you know, you're going to have people um, that may even are really engaged at the beginning, but they are longer, <laughs> they are longer down in the process, but they have that initial excitement. And so, you know, getting, being able to keep providing value long-term that is going to support that relationship is really crucial because if you have the technology, if you're, you know, using an IDX broker site, then you're going to know that when they start coming back and engaging heavily again, but as long as you've done a good job as, of nurturing the relationship, you know, they're going to come back to you. And even just being able to analyze traffic history really gives you insight into whether how serious they are and also gives you the ability to really do buyer personas because you can see what they're looking at, what they continuously looking at, the price range of the properties they're looking at, the area that they're looking at. And from there, you can easily create a buyer persona just from that. Awesome. Um, real quick, we have a question here. And I don't know if we can speak to this because I'm I've not heard of this, but Brandon, maybe you have. How does Marketing 360 compare with Top Producer X? If I remember correctly, he's googling as we're speaking. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember, I remember correctly, Top Producer is only a CRM. I'm not yeah, sure really what kind CRM. of marketing they do. Yeah, I, I, and and again, I'm not entirely familiar with that, but I'm pretty sure that it's it, it is very popular. You know, it utilizes it's, it's a broker tool essentially, but I believe it's just CRM. Okay. Um, I don't know that for sure. I've never personally used it. I've only ever heard of it. Okay. I've used their old one. Um, they're before top producer, actually just top producer. And from what I'm aware, it's definitely just a CRM, but I'm not sure okay. if they added more functionality. After Perfect. That. Yeah. That's, that's just one, one of the apps that, that, uh, we have for marketing 360 right. CRM is very important, yep. but so is an enclosed ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? You, because you've got to be able to bring all of these pieces together. Otherwise, you're constantly importing and exporting and passing all over, and it just it ends up taking more time. You'll go back to the the, the, the pad of paper because truly that's faster than not having a fully integrated system. Sure, absolutely. Um, another question that I'm just going to answer quickly is um, regarding Marketing 360 already having templates and campaigns that are successful for real estate agents. The answer to that is yes. Um, we have tried and true tried and true methods for specifically the real estate um, industry. And yes, there are tem templates within Marketing 360 and campaign examples specifically for real estate agents. All right, um, let's talk about content. We talked a lot about sending content, keeping customers engaged, keeping leads engaged. What type of content do we need to be sending? Uh, video. <laughs> right here video content <laughs> and what specifically in that video content <laughs> I, you know no matter what content you're sending no matter what medium you're sending it in right regardless of whether it is on social media if you're sending it over email um, you need to make sure that it's really value driven for for precisely where they're at in the process um, I know we've used the word buyer personas a couple times, but, um, you know, I, I'm such a big fan of, um, expect like what to expect in the process or, you know, especially because things have been weird lately. I think there's a hesitancy, hesitancy for a lot of people of being curious. Okay. Well, what does it mean to look at houses right now? Is it all going to be online? Depending on what state you're in, can I go into the house or listing a house? Do I want strangers coming into my house? Or, you know, with as competitive 
as the market is for buyers right now. Anything that you can send that is timely and relevant, right? If you're pulling content from your CRM that you've had for 15 years and you're just sending them the same drip campaigns, they're going to tune it out. But if you can, if you can be hyper relevant to what's happening right now and provide value, like YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world right now. Google's number one, Google owns YouTube. YouTube is number two. And people go to YouTube for like how to's constantly, or, you know, my sister is looking at, um, she's moving to Vegas and she's been trying to decide whether she's going to buy a condo or rent a condo. And just in the last couple of weeks, she's seen like prices rising. And so we were having this conversation. She's like, I wonder why, like, why is everyone moving to Vegas? I typed in a search. Why is everyone moving to Vegas right now? And I found a real estate agent with, you know, doing like a panel type thing on a YouTube video talking about the influx of people leaving California and going to Vegas. That's great content. If you are an agent in Vegas, right, you should be producing that kind of value driven content that lets people know, like answers the questions, mm -hmm. right? You should figure out what questions people are asking in your market and start making content, whether it's video and or, you know, not video content. But you should be providing the kind of content to people in the pipeline that are the questions that they have that they're not asking you. Brandon has nothing to add. I'm Nailed shocked. it. Nailed <laughs> it. Uh, I, I, I can talk about this stuff all day. And you know, I know we're on a time limit here. So I'm, I'm doing what I can to kind of hold it in. <laughs> awesome. Um, yes. And I couldn't agree more. It's I also um, I am not in the market to purchase a home. Um, but where Brandon and I live and where Madwire and Marketing 360 is, much like the rest of the country, we're having um, a crazy market here where people just can't buy homes and it's crazy. But I did get an email recently from a real estate agent that I've worked with in the past where she reached out to tell me it was this whole email about why people are moving to this area and why it's driving prices up and then gave me an estimate on what I could potentially sell my home for. And I have to tell you, although I'm not moving for a moment, I thought about it. And I said to myself, maybe I should call her. I didn't, but I thought maybe I should. <laughs> but it's so timely, right? Yep. Timely. Absolutely. Um, all right. That was great. So now we know what types of content to be sending. We talked a lot about the technology and how we really need to utilize technology um, to keep in touch with leads. Now let's talk about analyzing the behavior of leads and what that looks like and what do we do after we see all of this data, what do we do with it? Nick, do you wanna jump in here? Yeah, so really analyzing the behavior of leads is gonna be for the most part, you know, like we discussed previously, their traffic history, um, you know, their uh, opened emails, um, their read emails. That's really the main thing to analyze what a lead is looking for um, to really, you know, validate how, you know, beneficial that lead may be. Um, those are really the main ways that I'm aware of. I think once you, once you get that, that sense from your data that this is someone that is highly engaged. I love Brandon's approach that he talked about. Like, just be frank with them. Uh, people, people crave authenticity. The difference between an agent that is like unsure and not wanting to like, I'm not saying be pushy, but if you're holding yourself back as opposed to just sort of being like, yeah, well, they'll, you know, they'll call me when they're actually ready to make the decision. No, they won't. Another agent will have called them. So if your data is telling you that this person is highly engaged and that they're, you know, on the site and they're looking at houses and they're, they're opening your content pieces, talking about value. Um, I, I can't say it any better than Brandon really did like pick up the phone and ask them, are you ready to do this? Like, Let's do it. And you've, you've been, you know, you've you're not being pushy. Yeah. You know, you're just asking. And that's a serious question. I'm, I'm, here, I'm actually at a lead. 
Yeah, that's your hot lead. I'm at a trade show right now and I was, I was walking the floor yesterday and I overheard this conversation between a vendor and a buyer. Uh, and I absolutely cracked up over it because the, the buyer's asking questions about the product and what are, they, you know, what are they selling and their minimum opening order and things like that. And I don't know exactly how it got to this point, but the vendor finally goes, go away. I don't deal with broke people. Go away, go away. You're, wa you're wasting my time leave me alone and i'm dying in the i'm just cracking up over this exchange and that and maybe that's not the right approach right <laughs> that's not a good approach but it is okay to move past the time wasters yeah it's okay to move them into a different automation sequence it's okay to not spend your time on them because if you're using your technology correctly you're asking them, you're having the conversation, you're you know, uh, doing what Nick said and looking into the, what's kind of their, their motivation and are they clicking, are they engaging, are they interacting? Focus your energy on those and do exactly what this vendor did and be like, I don't have time for you. I might have time for you in the future when you get your business together, but I don't have time for you right now. The likelihood of them ever doing business is probably pretty slim, but this guy's at a trade show. He has a little bit to do. Uh, he's got a lot to do in a little bit of time. There's a lot of people to talk to and no time to do it. He's got to focus his energies where it makes the most sense. It didn't on this guy. It's push him along, right? It's okay to do that with some of your customers as well, or your leads as well. They're not customers until they sign on the dotted line and the transaction's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, all right. Lastly, before we we sign off here and let everyone get back to their day. Um, there are a lot of real estate agents out there. It just is what it is. And when somebody who might be new to an area or maybe doesn't, I, referrals are obviously huge, but let's say somebody doesn't have a referral. So they're just seeking out a real estate agent. Trust is going to be really important in credibility. So how can a real estate agent gain trust and credibility with leads? Social proof, <laughs> um, right? Like you need to make sure that, you're, that you've got reviews on your website, that you've got the Zillow reviews. Um, social proof is huge, especially for, for our generation that like, you know, I don't even buy a, a whisk on Amazon without reading the reviews, <laughs> right? Because I know that the internet is going to tell me if it's good or not. So I think social proof is really, really huge. Um, and you also need to have a social media presence. Yeah. Um, I, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you if your social media presence is your Facebook business page where you just post your listings, you don't have a social media presence. Um, your, your social media presence needs to be a mixture of business and human. Um, people can't connect with pictures of houses, but they can connect with a human being. So um, you need to be present on social media. And then obviously I, I'm a big believer in getting face to face with people over video, putting your face in front of them. That's going to help you build trust um, faster than any plain text communication can. Those are those are my recommendations: social proof, yep. social media, and video. Great, and a so, really good website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the website honestly is important. You know, most people search online to find the real estate agent. The about us page on the real estate agent website is the third most visited page. Um, you know, having that social media on Facebook is another very important thing. The reviews are very important. Um, you know, even if you make a sale as well, following up with that client, whether it's, you know, birthdays, you know, anniversaries, whatever, 74% um, of the clients will give you a referral if you stay in touch. So make sure that you're constantly communicating as well with your previous buyers and sellers, um, because more than likely you'll get a referral. Um, and the other thing is really, you know, you got your SEO that's important. You know, when people are searching um, properties, they're normally going to know where they want to live or what area they want to live. Um, so making sure you have good SEO, your website, creating those community pages to really highlight different types of homes, such as, you know, uh, subdivisions, cities, postal codes, counties, golf course homes, waterfront homes, new construction, hobby farms. Creating those community pages on your website is going to help drive traffic as well if you're a new agent in a new area. 
Um, and then always, if you have a great marketing campaign, normally what people are worried about most is making sure their house is either bought or sold as quick as possible. So if you have a good marketing plan campaign for your sellers and you can you know, show them what that is, then normally that's going to really help with getting new leads converted. Great. And one thing to think about is that it's a lot of it's going to be market dependent, right? For the most part, you could be in, in Colorado, especially in Northern Colorado, you can be a terrible realtor and still buy and sell homes pretty quickly just because <laughs> the market's so nuts here. The yeah. problem is that's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. It absolutely will not last forever. You know, we saw this with, um, uh, with COVID when it first hit. A lot of businesses that just rely on foot traffic started to realize really quickly, wow, I can't sustain my business without foot traffic. That's not okay. If your business is only sustaining itself because there's, uh, there's an overabundance of business to be had, that's not okay. So those are things that you've got you've to consider and think about. Nick, your point to uh, having the community pages, I think is critical, but beyond uh, just, you know, listing it out from an SEO perspective, yep. I want to know that you know something about that community. Yep. I want to know, is this community on the rise? Is this community kind of flatlined? Uh, is this a, a, a good spot for a potential rental if I decide I want to rent this in a couple of years? Uh, is this an investment place? Is this a better spot where I'm going to see a return on my investment if I stay in it as my forever home for the next 20 years or so? I want to know those things, mm -hmm. but more importantly, I want to know that you know them because I, as a homeowner, I don't know what, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what questions to ask. So there's an aspect of educating beyond the expectation that I think is really, really critically important for a lot of, a lot of small businesses, but realtors in particular, because it is such a complex transaction to be had. Um, being able to pre-answer my questions and become my resource where you're providing me with information I didn't even know I needed helps make me feel more comfortable. Me as the researcher, me as the person who's about to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a property, the more comfortable you can make me feel before I've even signed on the dotted line or started searching for homes, the better. So it all comes down into this adding the human element, like Alicia said, and ensuring that your, your technology stack and your information, your content is all aligned and provides this information that's critical for a, for a realtor if they want to see success beyond the overflow of an excess of business. Absolutely. And on, on, on community pages, I always recommend adding, you know, what's there to do in that community? What makes it special? Yeah. You know, add market report data to it um, because the more information that you add, the more beneficial it's going to be for your end users. And then you can add lead generation to those community pages as well. Um, with over 2 million real estate agents, you really have to do things that make you stand out. Um, if not, you're going to be, you're not going to be as well off. Absolutely. All right. I would like to open it up to questions. If anybody has questions that were burning the whole time or things that we didn't talk about or answer, go ahead and put that in the Q and A or the chat. Um, and while that's happening, I'm also going to launch a poll. Um, if you all could respond to this poll, if you feel like it, that would be great. Um, and while you all are taking the poll, Gary asked, when will this, or will this session be available to you afterwards? Yes, it will. We will be sending out a follow-up email with the whole recording of the session um, by tomorrow morning. Great. Well, Thank you everybody who attended today. We hope that it was informative. We hope you learned something. Um, and like I said, you'll be getting a follow-up from us just with the recording of the webinar. So you can go back and watch it and, and pull out great nuggets from it. Um, all of us are always available to help. Each company is here and, and eager and ready to help you guys succeed. Um, any closing remarks from our panelists? It was fun. <laughs> I love, listen, I, I love these conversations. Like Brandon said, we could talk about this all day. Oh yeah, I think all of us could. Uh, definitely be sure to check out BombBomb Bomb and IDX Broker. Uh, and if you have a chance to check out Marketing 360, please do so. We're all here to help and help support you. Um, and if you do have other questions, I'm sure all of us are uh, reachable and available on uh, your favorite social media platform. Uh, you can also find uh, me on Marketing 360, any of our socials. And if you hit us up on YouTube, uh, I've got a bunch of videos there where I talk about a lot of different marketing strategies as well. So always a pleasure to see your comments and to uh, engage there. So 
Thanks for having me on here. I really appreciate it. And just one other question before we take off here. Um, Robert wants to know if IVX is part of Red X or vice versa. No, we are not part of Red X. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. Thank you to our panelists. We definitely enjoyed having you all here. Um, and happy marketing as always. <laughs>